My name is Jim Meek. I have uh, been in, uh, I've been a pastor, church planner. I've been uh, associate dean at Covenant Seminary in St. Louis, dean at Erskine Seminary in uh, South Carolina. Uh, my academic field is New Testament, uh, but I work a lot with New Testament use of the old. So I'm constantly looking at the, uh, uh, not only at the, at the New Testament text in, in Greek, but also at the Old Testament text in Hebrew and in Greek. Uh, I'm finding it, uh, to see where those connections are, and I find that increasingly uh, helpful uh, in my in using accordance. I've, I've used it for 20 years, and I I am more and more finding that I I look to the Old Testament to understand things I run across in the New Testament. Um, I, uh, I I have accordance on my phone, and I, I regularly find myself using that as I'm thinking about a sermon. I'm interacting with the the text and thinking, okay, is that what what is the what is the the meaning of that uh, that verse or uh, how does that fit? Does that remind me of something else in the Old Testament or elsewhere in the Bible that I, I'd like to look up and and see? Just a little example. One one person asked me uh, the other day a question about John's prayer or Jesus' prayer in John that the church would be one, mm -hmm. and I thought, you know, aren't there some other statements about being one in John and uh, you know, I'm the good shepherd, you know, there'll be one flock and one shepherd, and uh, uh, and uh, I've come to gather all the scattered church of God that they may be one, and realize we, we tend to read that verse as all of us Christians ought to get together despite our denominational connect, uh, differences, but, but by the time you get to that third or fourth use of one, that they may be one in John, it's, it's at least initially about Jews and Gentiles. So I, I was able to confirm my suspicion by looking at those texts and finding instances of one, the word one there in John and, and thinking about, well, you know, I, I need to read that passage a little differently than I've read before. So I was in a, another Sunday a Christian ed class and the teacher was making the odd to me suggestion that the, in Psalm 23 that the uh, table, uh, you'll prepare me a table for my enemies. Somebody has suggested that that was actually a, a reference to a ge geographical feature that the shepherds would feed sheep on this tableland, and so I said, I don't know about that. So I, again, I fired up my uh, my Hebrew concordance, and uh, one of the things I like about concordance is that if I've got if I've got one one biblical language in the top window, and the English in the bottom, often I'm I'm when I want to find what a word is means, I'm looking to skim the English. I don't want to read, you know. 60 verses in Hebrew, I'm, I'm looking for the quick, what's the range of this meaning of this word? And there were no instances in, in the Hebrew Old Testament where the word for table in Psalm 23 refers to table land. It was all just tables. And, uh, you know, we, we associate those two things in English, but I have no doubt that in other languages, whatever they call a, a plateau like that is, you know, not necessarily table. So I just thought that was, you know, that, that seemed to miss to me. So uh, I, I use it, I, I, I'm whipping it out all the time when I think about things and when I want to do something more ser serious, I'm at my laptop, which is of course where I started when I started with Accordance 20 years ago. So I enjoy it a lot.